right uh, today we are going to discuss uh, a new uh, experiment in the node js how to install node js with the help of the node js framework as well as we are going to configure visual studio vs code now this is the part the agenda what we are going to discussing the four parts are there understanding the web development framework and followed by the installing node js and we have some discussion over node package manager and followed by how a simple node js application can be created so this node js is not related to only the part of where we can use it as a server side but also we can use as a client side as well now without late of this one before understanding the entire picture of the mean or the mun we need to understand the web development framework clearly so to understood that let we have the references we are following to discuss about this is we are following roughly a two books node js mongo db and angular web development by the brothers brad delay brad and delay and cabal delay and one more book we are following has a base as a reference for getting mean with mongo express angular and node so these are the two uh, books roughly and other than this two books also we are following some other sources from different websites now coming to the part of the first agenda of today's topic web development framework any web development framework consisting of the four sections right so four sections we can also call as the four frameworks or components not frameworks components the one is user and there is the browser and there is a web server and back end services let me have with a graphical representation how this four components will look like the user can be interact with anything like example they can interact with a desktop they can interact with mobile or any other part now how the user are going to be talking is with the help of the keyboard or mouse or touch or voice they are going to talking over there but anyhow in the through the mobile or desktop they are going to be discussed with the help of the browser itself that may be a mobile uh, supporting browser or it may be a desktop supporting uh, browser now see the second component is a browser now how you are talking with the browser we have different ways we can talk with the browser one is if you want to be have any static way interaction with the client itself we can use the javascript which is a client side scripting language we can also interact with json which is a javascript the notations with the help of that javascript notations we are going to using or xml also extendable markup language we can also interact with the browser another way with the help of html css image or any other parts of elements we can use it all these together we are going to be using the user to interact it right so this two components the user and browser is going to be discuss talking about to have at one point the other point this is at client side the other point is at server side the rest of the two components that is web server and back end services is other part now what you, how you are going to be sending a request to uh, the server with the help of the http or with the help of get put ajax maybe asynchronous javascript and xml the full form of ajax any one of this format we are going to be interacting to the web server what actually the third component is talking about here is the third component web server it's acting as the local server to interact to compute or to do any some manipulations we can use this web servers examples of web servers as in the previous you have learned it apache which is a tomcat apache is a web server not only that we can also use a internet information server as well that is ia ias other than this also we have different web servers but the question here is how you are going to be talk with web server when you talk with the local browser you are writing client side scripting client side scripting in normal javascript as usual now when you want to talk with the web server we need to be write in the language that may be a php that may be java dot net c++ as well as we can use node js so why the use of this php means when you talk with the web server that may be apache that may be ias or any other web server we can need to write the code 
to understand that in server side scripting some of the server side scripting languages we can use as php as uh, most of you are using and now we are also using node js and coming to the fourth component which is the back end services so in the back end this is nothing but this is the fourth component database that back end you can use mysql oracle django or maybe excel file ms access file different databases we can use it as per the user requirement as per the client requirement you can be change the database now if you see closely observe how the arrow marks is moving to talk with the web server here to talk with the web server we are going to be writing server side scripting now to talk with the db also we are going to using server side scripting now to talk with the other services directly the db has dependent in the other third party databases or any cloud when you want to talk over there that also can be talked with the help of server side scripting so server side scripting that may be a php that may be a node js or maybe the java dotnet c++ we can not only talk with the web server we can also talk with the back end database what we are going to be using as well as we can also talk with that server side scripting other services example cloud services any other web services we can talk over there so this is the figures over there now how you are going to be making the server side scripting means with the help of files so with the help of files you are going to be creating that file may be a js file javascript file or that may be file may be any jsx file or that may be a ts file type script file not only javascript you can also use the type scripting files also so all the things how you are returning in the server side scripting means in the form of files only anything if you want to interact between this one we are writing in the form of file what will be there in the file means the language which you are the scripting which you are selected that code will be available in the respective files so this is a rough picture where we are going to using maybe mean or merl that the flow where the four components talking to each other now as part of that user has i said you the any fundamental parts of the any website if you want to be interact you can first of all need to use the website itself so what's the website here we can be accessed with the help of browser now we can we have the page application what you want that directly you can touch with the keyboard or touch with the mouse this option i want or this option i want or this one i want or select this one the behavior of that application can be done by the user through computer or mobile devices now the output which you are going to see over the user based on the input has given through the web framework visually representation through that uh, whatever the web frame, framework you are taking in the same page we are visualizing that code also but the interaction the user has done with the help of mouse clicks keyboard inputs like swipe taps or any other mobile devices we can use it and coming to the second part of is browser now i already told you that the browser can have can take the javascript as a client side scripting html xml json format different ways we can interact with in the browser we have three roles any browser that may be a chrome or that may be a opera that may be a ie any browser can done three roles to the web framework web framework means keep it in your mind the four components user the browser web server and back end services that is entirely called as web framework a web framework is not only the browser a web framework is nothing but this four component has to remember the three roles can be done by the web browser this one is the communication means how we are going to be interacting to the web form web server what is the role of the page you are entering gmail.com now you are entering username and password you are giving the input right so to whom you are connecting you are connecting to the gmail server that is one communication to the server you are accessing right next second role is interprets interprets is nothing but whether the username and password or the whether the options whatever you have selected all that type of computation it has to be the data we need to be render we need to be interpret that data from the server and to view the user actually want to see it once you enter the username password correctly you can view your inbox page or else if it is a wrong it will be not visible that page so the data from the serv server whatever you want that and renders it into the view renders is nothing but it is going to be make compute or interpret whatever the inputs you have given based on the inputs you have given it again shows that view that view is a your inbox view as the example of the gmail.com or page 
does not exist or invalid password or user id and password is mismatching like this the view has to be done it the third component is to handle that user interaction now you are done you are there is a interpreter has done now once you are handling means how you are going to be user has interacting through the keyboard by clicking mouse touchpad touch screen any input devices you can be given through voice through maybe having i arrays or any other appropriate inputs you can give it to perform that particular action so any browser having these three roles one is communication and there is interprets and there is the to handle that interprets coming to the first part of this how you are going to be the server web server the browser has to be communicate so the browser can be communicate with the help of http or http yes which is a security now this protocols already has studied in computer networks in this protocol means in this http defines a communication what will be there in between which this http is acting between the second component means browser and the third component which is web server between these two parties these two components the http can be acted what will be there in that http in http defines what type of request it is whether you want to download a file whether you want to be store that file whether you want to be modify that particular file whether you want to access that one what is the request as well as it also consisting the response you are expecting from in which format the response you are expecting in the format of html again you are expecting or in the format of the text file you are expecting or the response you are expecting in the form of otp or the form of the any that format also be consisting in http and http adds an security layer as in the computer networks we have different layers we have also the uh, the layers like the secure socket layer and transport layer uh, sessions also be available session sockets layers also transport layer this two we can be use it to provide this http yes to provide the security nowadays you also seen that it is asking minimum uh, three way authentication to accept your request or the certification verification also be doing now three main types of request as i said you uh, we can have this get get is nothing but to get the uh, data from the server now with the help of get which is already you have studied in php to get the data we retrieve the data from the server in which format you are retrieving in the form of maybe html files in the form of images or in the form of json format you can use to get it to post the data means to send the data from to the server means from the web browser to web server you can use it when you have a item you have selected shopping cart or submitting a web form you have in the cart you have selected some items so once you submit that one it has to be ordered it now you are sending this book this cart or book this book or book this any uh, shirt or some other mobile and you can submit a form so to submit to send the data to the server you can use post to get the data from the server you can use get and one more thing is ajax which is a full form as asynchronous javascript and xml so it can be used either get or post request directly to the help of the javascript now ajax can be receive the request in the form of xml format json format or any other unstructured data that is a raw data the second part of this browser is rendering the browser view means interprets how the view can be done it now how the input output can be read out the screen that the user actually views and in, uh, interacts what is often several uh, different piece of data retrieved from the web browser server now you reach the data from uh, the url now you are entering www.gmail.com now through an initial url you are rendering means you are interpreting rendering here is what you are interpreting or computing or interpretations over there that url the html document to build a dom that is document object model so this document object model in the form of a tree structure example i'll show you an example now you have submitted a document you have received a document over here the total document is nothing but the entire file now in that file the hierarchy will be html followed by the head and body inside the body we have some different tags are available so you are rendering the browser the browser view with the help of the dom tree structure the dom tree structure is nothing but like what you have studied the document followed by the html the head and body it is going to be accessing in that same format if your dom tree structure is very clear then the output viewing also be 
very clear over there now what will be there in the tree structure that may be a what will be there in the document first of all the document consisting of maybe some html files it all available css files also be available client side scripting example javascript media files like image video sound and it also consisting of some data excel form xml format json format raw data and it also consisting of hppp headers as i talk you just now hppp headers consisting of client side scripting what actually it has to be done it means it has to check it out whether the username password is correct or not to write it the script and how it will be behave example for the uh, the client side scripting to define the behavior is it stores in cookies as well so in the head, HTTP headers, it have consisting of, as I said you late, uh, just now, type of the data you are sending for the request, as well as in which format you are expecting the return, return back the response that will be available in HTTP header. And the third component of this uh, second component, third uh, subsection is user interaction. Intra this interaction can be done with the help of the any input device. That may be a mic, that may be a keyboard, that may be a touch, and it captures that input and the, based on the input of the given by the user, the respective action can be done. It That action may be a pop-up, that action may be a new document, that action may be a SMS, that action may be a text, that action may be a OTP, any other. Now, what they are doing is that total data which you are receiving, sending by the server, the server you are requesting for a transaction of booking IRCTC. Now you are entering the credit card details, right? So to book it. Once you enter the credit card details, it is sending some OTP to you. The server is sending a text message to your mobile number, SMS. Once you enter the OTP, what will happen? The server of that particular ICICI or whatever the card you are entering, that will be sent back the request in the form of HTML. What request will get it once you enter the OTP? Once you are booking the ticket is, you will get a ticket. How it look like the ticket? It's a page, right? It's a page look like that one. Parallelly, you are also getting a SMS, you're also getting a email. The response you are the sending by the server, it will be a, in the form of a page. That may be an HTML page, one more be an email, another may be the SMS, what's the trend number, et cetera, et cetera, these coach numbers, the seat numbers, everything. In the form of page, it is returning, right? So that's how we can be computed. Now, who will be do that computation? That executed by the client side JavaScript. Whatever the things can be done at server side, we can write the server side scripting. Once it is sending that page to the client side, it will be evaluated over there and it display the pages. You can do the computation at the client side itself, or you can do the computation at the server side itself. It depends, depends on how you are writing the code over there. And followed by the third component, first component user, second component browser, third component is web server. Now, how you are handling this web server request now to handle at the browser, we are using client side and HTML CSS. Now how you are handling the web server request, whichever you are getting the request from the browser, you are handling that request in the web server, that request in which format it will get it. The request may be coming from the browser is a document or post the data or any other maybe get or the uh, post of Ajax request, it's a combination. And the web server uses the HTTP header. What will be there in the HTTP header? The type of the request, what the request has came, and the response in which you have to be written it. That URL will be there. So it reads, it renders the HTTP header by the web server, and different dependables also be there. Because to access that one, example, once you submit the ticket, book it, once you enter the captcha or something, you are selecting some credit card, enter it. But once you enter the credit card, what will be there in the thing is they have so-and-so train number and so-and-so uh, booking date and so-and-so number of seats will be sent it. How much amount it will be there? That will be sent to the respective bank. That's all. What will we do in the web server of the respective bank? It will see the amount, how much it has to detect from the account, whether it is available or not, check it and detect it. Once it is done, the dependables to generate the ticket is what? A successful message has to came from the respective bank as well as the time duration, which is has to be done by booking of the ticket, maybe as five minutes or six minutes, that as well as internet access has to be available. All these are the dependencies to book a ticket. To book a ticket is not only depend only on IRCTC, different dependings are available. 
all the dependencies like web server, how it will be configured, what are the technologies has going to be taking. Just I'm mapping an example for IRCTC ticket, like how the bank account balance, the time duration, which is set by IRCTC, the internet access, all of the dependencies in the same fashion to execute the response or to execute the request to send the response, the different dependencies are available. If the dependencies are properly mapped, properly configured, then the request is easily done it. So most of the web servers going to be using as have we shown in the web uh, framework, Apache or IIS. Now, once the, to handle this one, post requests that modify the server data to interact with the backend services. If required, we can also go for the backend services. So to interact with the backend services or to this web server, it's need server side scripting. So normally server side uh, program means what? Anything that can be executed by the web server to perform the task the browser is requested. Normally web server or server side programming, for what purpose you are going to be running? Whether you are accessing through mobile browser or whether accessing from laptop browser or maybe a desktop browser, whatever the request or the task has asked by the browser to execute that one, we are going to be making this server side programming. So how we are going to write this server side programming? It's written in PHP or Python or C or C++ or Java. So once it is executed, that web server, with the help of this, a mechanism has to done it. Again, it has to be sent back it, right? So automatically the server side, server side scripting will wire them to a specific URL location and it will be whatever the request asked by the server, a browser, it will send back to that. So a little bit of configuration is required here to send it again one, uh, one more time uh, to the uh, request and it will be wire. Wire is nothing but the connection to has to be done it. So this server side scripting, either the response can be generated directly by executing the code or connect the backend server such as database to obtain the necessary information once it is properly there. Example, if in the banking ser uh, services, if the amount is available, it depends. Available, then it is successfully the information has sent by the bank to the IRCTC. Once it is done, the response has came. Your ticket is booked. If the balance is not available, if the OTP is incorrect or the bank credit card details is incorrect, it will not generate the response. Automatically, it will be remove that or the request has failed. This is how they can be done it. The fourth component is backend services. So how the backend services can be done with the help of the uh, any backend means here database. So a request has came from the browser that requires the information to fulfill it, whether the available bank details is correct or not, or the Gmail, whatever the username, password you have given, or OTP you have given, correctly entered or not, we require the backend in the database. So to backend server, uh, to access it, we are writing server side scripting. So what we can write is in the server side script, for what purpose you can write it? To connect to the database, we need to write the server side scripting. To retrieve the information from the database, we need to write the server side scripting. To make the format in a structure format or it send backs to the browser, we require write the server side scripting. In the same fashion, if any, it is a request. If any request has came to store into the database, conversely, do the same to write the server side scripting, right? So this is about the part of the first one, web server, uh, the framework what we require is four parts, user, browser, and web server, and backend services. This is the, for any programming, or for any mean or man, or any other advanced technologist, if you want to use it, it will be the best part. So we, in the next part, we'll be talk about the another part of this is installing Node.js.